So this is the handover for the Trigano Tribute. We'll begin on the outside of the vehicle with something sweet and simple, the fuel system. Open up the flap, it's not affected by the central locking. Ignition key in, twist and twist off. You can hang the cap on the cook if you wish to during the fueling process. Down below the skirt behind the sliding door, you have your wastewater outlet. So all of the water from the shower tray, uh, kitchen sink and vanity unit is all collected into one holding tank, pull forward on this lever and it opens up a gully underneath to allow that tank to drain off. Behind the sliding door, you have your fridge ventilation. Don't be surprised on warmer days if when the sliding door is open, if you hear um, a fan, um, it's just to improve the circulation uh, whilst the door is open. Towards the back of the van, you've got your mains hookup. Always connect to the side of the van, first of all. So open up the cap, push the lead in, and then connect to the power supply at your power point. So there are a couple of features inside the back of the van. We folded up the bed for the convenience. Staying with the theme of the mains hookup, when we open up this locker on the left hand side, up inside of the top of the unit, you have your mains uh, circuit board switch, just a single switch. So if it's pushed upwards, it allows the main supply to come in. If it's pulled down, it will shut the main supply off. In the bottom of that locker, you don't have a spare wheel on this van, so you have this reflation kit. It consists of a pump and some gel, and that can be squirted into the tires to refill. Previous owners left behind for you some leveling wedges, a mains cable, uh, cable bag, and also the silver screens for the cab. Later on, we'll talk about the rollout awning. And then in here, you've got your gas bottle. On top of the cylinder, you've got a brass valve, which enables you to turn it on and turn it off. Always make sure that your gas supply is switched off when the vehicle is in transit. In this bag, you've got a filler hose system. So you, one end goes onto a tap, one end goes onto the side of the van, and then you can obviously inflate the hose uh, with putting it with water. The blinds on these vans uh, work in a couple of ways. So you have push these tags together, draw it all the way up and clip it underneath to give you your blind. Pull the whole thing back down again and take the fly screen down for your, get the bugs out. For the opening of the windows, push in on the red tabs, release the latches and then push out. They're on ratchets, so it'll go out to a certain point and then lock into a position. There's an additional opening point to close, just push beyond, and they should then come back in. You can leave it on a latch position for ventilation, but when traveling, all of the windows must be completely shut. So you have a Fiamma F65 awning, hook through the eye, and wind it out. Wind it out to a midpoint where you can reach the inside of the legs. Pull the leg end out first of all, then unclip from the center. Let the leg fold round. Push it down onto the ground and then lock the leg off. And repeat the same with the other side. These are sunshades in wet or windy conditions. They need to be put away. You can extend the awning out further by walking the leg out and winding the canopy out more so. It's the reverse of putting it away. Draw it back into a convenient point. Wind your leg back in. Push in at the elbow and then push in on the center clip and then wind the awning back in. It's advisable always to do this when the sliding door is shut. Sometimes the top of the power mitt can catch the top of the door. So for filling the tank with water, you have just a straightforward cap. Turn the key over, twist the cap, and then hose pipe straight in. There's an overflow on the tank, so you might hear water splashing down. 
underneath the vehicle there's a drain valve for draining it off. You've got an exhaust vent for the water heating system, it's gas operated, uh, that comes with a plastic cover. I put that plastic cover inside the vehicle for now. That must be removed in order for the gas side of the van to breathe. If the cover's left on, you won't be able to ignite the water heater on gas. Moving along, you've also got your toilet cassette on the outside as well. The flush water for these comes from your onboard fresh water tank, so all you have to worry about is the cassette itself. Pull up on the orange T-piece at the base, slide the whole body of the cassette out. It should come out nice and easily. If it doesn't, check to make sure that the slide is shut properly. Unscrew your grey cap completely, and then tip up, and it allows then all the waste to drain out. Before you load it back in, there's a measuring cup inside the top of the cap, Put some base chemical in, or the sachets, along with about two litres of water, and then load the cassette back in to the van accordingly. Just inside the cab door at the end of the dashboard, you have your bonnet release. On the floor underneath the passenger seat, you have your toolbox for the van and then below the carpet you have the vehicle battery. Having pulled the bonnet release lever you should be able to then find centre catch. Underneath the bonnet over on the left hand side you have your screen wash along with your power steering, brake fluid and radiator water. Oil filler cap is just there and then the dipstick is in front located there. Should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, rather than trying to expose the engine battery, underneath this cover is a flap and a paddle. Put your positive connection from your jump leads onto there, and the negative goes onto this rather anonymous looking bolt at the front, and you should be able to jump start the vehicle. When you come inside, on just inside the sliding door, you've got a 12 volt control panel. To turn it on, press the button on the right hand side, and immediately you'll get a time display uh, showing on there. To switch it off, press and hold for a couple of seconds, and you'll actually see the off sign come up, and that turns the control panel on. Press this one again, and it will give you your voltage reading. So it will show you the condition of your ledger battery and your vehicle battery. Button number two will give you indications as to how much water you have in your fresh water and wastewater tanks. S3 on this one is redundant. These are standardized control panel, so it's only the S2 for the gray water. This switch here is the switch that you would use for your water pump. Uh, when you're not having a shower or washing up, make sure the pump switch is left switched off. If fitted, there's an external awning light, and then this one is for the interior 12 volt lights. Vehicles fitted with diesel room heating system. It's very easy to use. Just turn the dial clockwise and you will see a green arrow come on in the center. There might be a short interruption uh, whilst the igniter and the pump start to work and then you'll start to feel warm air being discharged out through the heating system. It's taking its fuel supply direct from the main diesel tank. Uh, you need a minimum of about a third of a tank of diesel for it to operate efficiently. Below the kitchen unit, you have your gas taps. In the position that they are at the moment, they are giving you supply to the individual appliances. You can isolate those appliances if you wish, but it's safer to switch off at the bottle. Having turned on your gas supply in the back and made sure that the isolated taps are open, it's beneficial to burn some gas off on the hob. Choose the biggest burner first of all, use the igniter available, and ensure that you have that continuity of supply coming through. It then makes lighting other appliances that much easier. Hold down for a couple of seconds. There's no isolators on these lids, so make sure that this has been switched off and cooled down sufficiently. Otherwise, they can be damaged with being fold down prematurely. For the grill, remove any flammable materials. and then use the piezo igniter at the top and you should get a nice crisp flame coming off the burner. There's also a little interior light as well. 
The water heater on this model is gas operated only. Um, externally, we've already mentioned there's a flue and on top of that, there's a flue cover which needs to be removed first. Having purged the water supply through, so that means that you have a continuous supply of water coming out, you should then be able to fire up the water heater. It's a single rocker switch. Central position is off. It can go in one direction for a 50 degree setting and it can go in the opposing direction for a 70 degree uh, temperature setting. It takes around about 30 to 40 minutes or so for the water to heat up to those temperatures. If it fails to ignite because the gas flow is not coming through or perhaps because the cover's not uh, been left on externally, then it will be accompanied by a red light indicating that it's failed to ignite. Below the bed frame, you have the water heater itself and also the water pump. Essential for winter storage is that the yellow valve is lifted to the vertical position to allow the content of the water heater to drain out. Leave your interior taps open in the bathroom as well as the kitchen sink to allow the water system to drain off. To reset the unit, to recommission it, you need to make sure that the tab is back into the horizontal position. Turn your water pump on and turn your hot tap on initially in the kitchen and draw the water back through the system, repurging it. Do not attempt to try and heat the water up uh, without there being water in. So your fridge has a three-way operating system. Gas. Sorry, can you take your hands just out of short? Sorry. Go now. So your fridge has a three-way system. Um, you can operate it on gas or on mains um, when you are stationary. You can operate it on 12 volt when the vehicle is in motion. The gas operation you might use if you were wild camping. Flip on your igniter, make sure that the gas thermostat is turned to the maximum, and then the tap adjacent to it, turn it through 90 degrees so that the uh, arrow is pointing towards the flame symbol and hold it in for a few seconds and wait for the igniter to cease flashing. If you're going to operate the fridge on mains, then simply turn over the switch like so and then adjust your thermostat. The higher the number, the colder the fridge will become. On gas or on mains, it's important that the fridge is as near level as possible. So use the wedges that the previous owner left uh, to level the vehicle off uh, for its maximum efficiency. When you are traveling, you cannot operate the fridge on mains. You cannot operate the fridge on gas. So you can only operate it via this 12 volt switch. This will illuminate when the engine is running and all it's doing is taking a feed from the alternator to sustain the temperature within the fridge. If you set off with the warm dry fridge, having not pre-chilled the fridge in advance, um, then it won't have any impact at all. When you arrive on site, turn the 12 volt function off and go back onto mains or on gas, whichever is appropriate. So your Thetford toilet cassette has a swivel bowl function on it. To operate it efficiently, you need to push the slider back on the side of the bowl, and that allows your waste to go straight through. To flush, push down on the blue button. You'll need to make sure that the control panel pump switch is on as well, and you should get a jet of water going around. Close over after use, and you'll get an indicator light coming on on the control panel, telling you when the cassette is full and it needs to be emptied. So down on the side of the driver's seat um, in the passageway, you'll notice a bank of fuses. They are the interior fuses for the operation of the van. So you're clearing things like uh, the water pump and light fuses there. So we'll finish off in the cab of the vehicle. This is my preferred location for the cover for the water heater. It's a reminder to you that you need to fit it back onto the vehicle before you depart. Um, it's a good indication to you if you're inside the van that you've taken it off ready for the water heater to be used. As far as starting the vehicle goes, ignition key in, might have a steering lock, and you should then be able to start the vehicle up, like so. Behind the steering wheel, over on the right hand side, you have headlamp beam adjustment and your brightness and dimmer controls uh, for the interior lights. Over on the driver's door, you have your electric mirror controls. Turn the joystick in the direction of the mirror that you wish to adjust and then work the joystick accordingly. Behind that your electric uh, window controls, blinds on the side windows, 
have magnetic strips at the end for their closure. For the cab blind, there are two little clips which need to be released first of all, and then using the magnetic strip that can then be joined to the opposing section on the other side. So there are two magnetic strips on the inside of both sections that allow those two to join together. You'll need to reattach the mirror, it just slides back into position like so. And then make sure that the clips are back into position and holding the blind on both sides. You have a little glove box on the top as well as a glove block below, passenger airbag. So for the controls in the center, you've got ventilation and speed um, on this side of the dial. So you've got the direction um, and uh, airflow in and recirculation there. Heated rear side mirrors and fog light, reverse uh, hazard lights, and then a central locking function as long as all the doors are secure. On the main stalks, you've got indicators and light switches on the top left hand stalk as well as your main beam and then your cruise control function on the stalk below wiper controls are over on to the right hand side reverse on these vehicles down on the clutch up on the collar and then push the lever up and over for reverse so that concludes the handover for your van sincerely hope that the van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles but we're on the end of the phone if you do need us on behalf of Highland Camper Vans, thank you very much.